Ollie, can you help me get Jack so I can put a pickle on my sandwich? I know, I know. Here you go. What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. Today we are gonna to talk about the top five rules you absolutely need to follow if you wanna build some muscle, get jacked, get yoked, make people double take you on the street like, without getting fat, without popping a syringe into your butt, without popping pills, pop pills at the club for fun, not to build some muscle. So I'm gonna show you guys how to build some muscle and do it the right way. So sit back and relax and let's get into the video. Tip number one, don't eat like an idiot. Just cause you are bulking doesn't mean the diet's out the window. Can I get a party size pizza please? With uh, triple bacon. And I don't know if this is too much to ask, but I'm currently on a bulk right now and I was wondering if you could put cheese in the crust. Well, we, we, don't, we don't do stuff crust. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna give Domino's a shout and see what the situation is there then, okay? So just went to Starbucks, got my go-to order, which is a tall pike, no room, which is a medium roast coffee. No room means no room for dairy. And I also usually get the egg white dollops, the egg white sous vide bites, but they were all out. So I had to go with the ham and cheddar ones, which I've never had. So these ones are 250 calories. The egg white bites are 170. And take a look at these. Never had them before, so I thought I would taste test them. They smell. Unreal. So for an extra 80 calories, let's see if they're worth it. Oh God, yeah. You know the problem with eating is that eventually you gotta stop eating. So then you're no longer eating. It's kind of sad. These are money. Wow. Back to rule number one. You don't need a bulk to build muscle. You don't need to be in this massive calorie surplus, eating till you feel sick, putting on all this fat. A dirty bulk is a lot like texting your ex. You end up putting something toxic in your mouth and doing a lot more harm than good. You can totally build muscle at maintenance calories. You can totally build muscle in a calorie deficit. There, I said it. It can totally be done. Don't let someone tell you otherwise. I understand everyone always says you got to eat big to get big. And I, I used to believe that too. I like my daily diet back in the day was known in the athletic circles as carb loading, but it doesn't have to be like that. I what I recommend doing is eating at maintenance calories. So I had been eating at maintenance calories 3000 for the past year and a half now. And I've been slowly gaining muscle. It's not as fast as if I was in a calorie surplus because obviously being in a calorie surplus would be optimal to build muscle, but you will put on some fat too. And I don't want to spend the time dieting. So I'd rather just do it slow and I'd rather gain three pounds of muscle in the time I could probably gain seven pounds if I was in a calorie surplus, but I don't want to diet. I don't want to be in a calorie deficit. So I'd rather just do what I'm doing right now. So I've been at 3000 and I've just been slowly focusing on my gym performance. And I think that's the way to go. I think that's the way that you guys should do it. So I'm gonna head now to the grocery store, pick up some stuff for a grocery haul, and then show you guys like some of my essentials in my diet. Okay, so back from the grocery store, didn't really get that much, not a very big haul, but right here is probably like 80 to 85% of my daily diet. So first to start off with, I do cashew milk instead of regular milk. So cashew milk, unsweetened, 25 calories for a full cup, can't go wrong with that. Uh, for dinner every night, pretty much every night, I have pizza, a healthy pizza, and the base is always these pitas right here. They're quite big, 160 calories per pita, so I usually do two of those. And for the base, usually if you go to a store and you try to buy tomato sauce, it's like 50, 70, 100 calories plus per half cup. So what I usually do is I just buy some strained tomatoes, which is just 30 calories per half cup, and then I jazz it up on my own, add my own spices, like garlic powder, Italian seasoning, stuff like that. I also got some artificial intelligence maple syrup, AKA Walden Farms for oatmeal, a bunch of other stuff I use it for. Uh, got some zucchini, as you can see, I go through this like crazy, very low calorie, very versatile as well. Great on pizza too. Also got some cauliflower. Again, I go through this stuff like crazy. It's very versatile as well. You can make mashed potatoes, you can make cauliflower pizza crust. You can make that soup I made in my other video. I'm actually gonna show you guys a recipe a little later on in the video with this. Uh, I've got some rice cakes. This is usually like my go-to snack. I'd probably go through a full sleeve of these every two days or so. Got some egg whites. You can totally use regular eggs. I just prefer to get my fat from other sources. Then I got some ground chicken. So I'll either do ground chicken or ground turkey. Don't usually do ground beef because for right here, 100 grams is 120 calories. And when I went to the grocery store, 100 grams of ground beef was like 320 calories. So 
Very easy way to save 200 calories while eating the same volume of food. Got some cottage cheese, and then these things, these turkey sausages, are the goat. I put this on my pizza. So if you can find these in your grocery store, highly recommend you pick them up. So per one sausage is 90 calories, 17 grams of protein and two and a half grams of fat. You cannot beat this, so this is a must buy. Uh, also got these sugar-free Jello. So usually if I'm watching TV or I'm doing work late at night and I kind of want something sweet and I don't have enough calories left, these are a great option. They're only one gram of protein per pack, so I'll do that. And then last but not least, these things, absolutely love these. I go through this so fast, which is just ricotta cheese. Awesome on pizza, pasta, pretty much anything. So this brand right here, if you can find it, highly recommend that you pick it up. So per serving, which is four tablespoons, it's 40 calories. So cannot beat it. So again, as you guys can see here, I'm eating for volume. I'm still trying to do lower calorie options, even though I'm trying to gain muscle. So it's not all about getting the high fat, high calorie food. So yeah. Rule number two is to hit each muscle group two times per week. So contrary to the bedroom where you can hit it seven times a week or more, the optimal training frequency for a muscle is two times per week. Of course, if you like to, you can hit it one time per week like the traditional bro split. If that's what you enjoy to do, you'll just be gaining muscle at a slightly slower rate. You can even go beyond two times per week, even three, four, even every single day, but there hasn't been really any significant benefit beyond twice a week. So I highly recommend just sticking with two times per week. So you're training a muscle two times per week. How do you set this up? There's a lot of ways to do it. So you can do day one where you focus on the six to eight rep range. Day two, you can focus on the 12 to 15 rep range. So you're focusing on different rep ranges within different days. You can focus on different parts of the muscle on different days, like you're doing chest. One day you're focusing on more on the incline. One day you're focusing more on flat. You can do one day you're focusing more on barbell work and dumbbell work. So there's a lot of different ways that you can vary your training and still make sure you hit your muscles twice a week. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make a healthy shepherd's pie. So a shepherd's pie is like that layer dish with mashed potatoes and ground beef. There's usually a lot of fat in it from the ground beef and then like the butter and the mashed potatoes. So I found a way to make a healthy, high in protein, extremely low in fat and will fit anybody's macros. So to replace the potatoes, we're gonna be going with cauliflower like I mentioned earlier. So I got some cauliflower that I'm just boiling until it gets soft, like I can penetrate it with my fork. Also got a few uh, garlic cloves in there. So then when I blend it up, it'll kind of have that garlic flavor to it. I'll show you guys exactly what I do in just a moment with that. And then for the bottom part, instead of ground beef, we're gonna be doing the ground chicken that I bought earlier. And then I got some zucchini, some onions, some mushrooms, and some rosemary. Um, you can use totally whatever vegetables that you have on you, whatever sort of herbs you have on you. Uh, sage is good, thyme is good. So this is pretty much ready to go. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some beef stock. Feel free to use chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever. Around, I'd say just over maybe two thirds of a cup. There we go. And then I'm gonna add a little bit over a tablespoon of flour. And then I'm gonna evenly distribute that over the dish. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make like a gravy with like the chicken fat and the stock. So I'm gonna let that simmer for about five minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take the cauliflower off of the stove and we're gonna make the cauliflower mash. So cauliflower is all done. This is a full head of cauliflower, exactly 800 grams if you're wondering. And this is super simple. So all I'm gonna do is try to Probably not the best idea how I'm doing this, but I'm gonna pour this all into the blender. So usually when you make mashed potatoes, there's like a ton of cream, butter, sour cream, but instead just use non-fat Greek yogurt. So I'm gonna do a heap tablespoon, which is around a third of a cup. So like, just like that is gonna go in. And then last but not least, a little bit of pepper and just a little bit slash a lot of salt. You guys are on me about my salt intake, but salt is good, salt is not bad. And that is it. So I'm just gonna blend this up until this is smooth. And this is the mashed potatoes. This is great on its own if you wanna have it as a side dish with like a steak or something. Go. All right. Oh my God, it smells so garlicky. Like you need to add the garlic when you make this. So look how smooth, it's like a nice puree. It's unreal. Now I'm gonna plate the whole thing into this dish and then we're gonna pop it into the oven. So here I have my beef that has been simmering with the flour. So as you guys can see, it's a little bit thicker now because due to the flour. So I'm gonna pour that into the bottom of the pan. 
And then we're gonna add our cauliflower puree on top. Okay, there we go. So obviously you can put this in the oven just like that, but of course I like to top it off. You guys know how I feel about this seasoning, the Parmesan herb. Do a nice generous kind of sprinkle over the top. And then I have the oven preheated at 400 degrees confection bake. I'm gonna pop this in. Don't have a specific time, just whenever this gets a little bit crispy and I take it out. Oh baby, take a look at that. This must be one of the best recipes that I've come up with. And if you're wondering what the calories and macros are, well, I'll tell you right now. So the calories are 917 for the whole entire thing. And the macros are 118 grams of protein, 71 grams of carbs, and 24 grams of fat. That is a game changer. So I'm gonna let this sit and cool down because it looks like if I take a bite right now, I'll probably die. Obviously we gotta put some Frank's Red on it. So this is one plate and I probably have enough left there for probably around another six or seven of these. So you guys have to try this. It is so good. It The, the cauliflower tastes exactly like mashed potatoes would. And you would think that there's butter in it too. Oh my God. So what if you're someone who struggles to get your calories in? What do you do? Well, you do the complete opposite of what I do. You try to make things more calories with the same amount of volume you're currently eating. And there's so many ways that you can do that. The first one being start cooking with some more oils, start drinking your calories. Fruit juices are great to get easy calories in. Start swapping the cuts of meat. And so instead of chicken breast, do chicken thigh. So like eight ounces of chicken breast and eight ounces of chicken thigh. The chicken thigh is probably 300 calories more than the chicken breast. Uh, you can start doing full fat Greek yogurt instead of non-fat Greek yogurt. There's so many things that you can do and swap out to add in hundreds if not extra a thousand calories without even thinking about it. A little after 9.30 in the morning right now, I'm gonna be training in around an hour's time, but I wanted to show you guys my go-to pre-workout meal lately, which has been one and a half cups of non-fat Greek yogurt with three rice cakes. So right here, I'm getting around 30 grams of protein, which leads me to rule number three, which is to evenly distribute your protein servings throughout the day, ideally into three to four meals. It doesn't have to be exactly like if you're doing 200 grams of protein, 50, 50, 50, 50. I just shoot for around 30 to 50 grams. So I make sure to get minimum 30 grams of protein three to four times throughout the day. What this does is it helps optimize protein synthesis uptime. It helps with muscle growth and recovery. You know, like a month ago, this would not have been in my top five rules. I was a big advocate of intermittent fasting. I was doing it for five years until just recently. And I must say, Immediately, I have noticed a change in my physique, even eating the same amount of calories. You can still gear your calories later into the day. That's currently what I'd still do, but I just make sure to get protein at least three to four times throughout the day. Very quickly, I'm gonna show you guys what I take in terms of supplements, because a lot of you guys have been asking, and I think you guys would be surprised because it's not a whole lot. To start off, I take a couple tablets of vitamin C every morning. I'll then take some vitamin D. I think vitamin D is extremely important, especially right now during quarantine when we're inside a lot more than normal. I'll then take two uh, capsules of cod liver oil in the morning with my breakfast. Uh, then I'll take five grams of creatine monohydrate post-workout. And then some PE select protein is my protein of choice. Absolutely love it for baking my protein ice cream. My top flavors are chocolate cupcake and peanut butter cookie. By no means you need protein powder if you get protein from Whole Foods. I just like to have that. So as you guys can see, I don't have any pre-workout on me. I don't usually buy pre-workout. I buy it every now and then. But other than that, I usually just use coffee and I'm good to go. Time for some Aqua Zumba part two. That was a joke. What I'm actually gonna be doing is going into the pool for some active recovery post-workout to flush out some of that lactic acid, which leads me to rule number four, which is to recover just as hard as you train. You tear your muscle down in the gym, you grow and recover outside of the gym. I get asked all the time on Instagram, Will, how do you look the way you do? Only training four days a week. I'm in the gym seven days a week and I don't look nearly as good as you. It's not about how many days you train, it's about what you do in the days that you do train that make the difference. I can promise you if you're in the gym seven days a week and you feel like you don't need a rest day, you're not training nearly hard enough at all. Rest and recovery is so important. So what can you do to speed up the process? Well, you can sleep seven to eight hours a night. You can make sure to hydrate, have rest days in your week. You can foam roll if you have 10 minutes to spare post-workout. You can do active recovery like in the pool or a stationary bike. There are so many things that you can do. So if you're someone who needs to be in the gym every day because you feel like that's the only way a muscle will grow, the only thing you're gonna be feeling is sad when you make no gains. The last and final rule, rule number five is patience, guys. Patience is a virtue. Do you think when me and Ollie are in the Tim Hortons drive through line and it's really long, he starts to bark and complain, do you? No, because he knows at one point he is gonna get that Timbit. Do you think I start complaining? Come on, let's go. No, because I know at one point I'm gonna get those dozen donuts. Building muscle takes time. It's not all about scale weight. Scale weight is not everything. Just because you're not adding a pound a week does not mean you're not building muscle. Do you think if I add like 30 to 50 pounds on my bench press, I didn't build any muscle? Even if my weight stayed the same, I totally built some muscle. You good? 
So keep track of your gym performance, keep as much data on yourself as you possibly can. Just know your scale weight might not change that much at all, but that doesn't mean you didn't gain any muscle. Let's do a quick little recap of the video. So rule number one is you don't need to be in a massive calorie surplus to gain muscle. You can build muscle at maintenance calories. You can even build muscle in a calorie deficit. Rule number two is you wanna train each muscle group twice a week. Rule number three is you wanna space out your protein feedings throughout the day, ideally between three to four meals. Rule number four is you wanna focus on recovery, quality sleep, hydration, and nutrition. And rule number five is patience, guys. Building muscle takes some time. Now, the rules I share with you guys in this video become infinitely more important when you're trying to build muscle in maintenance calories or a calorie deficit. They are not quite as important if you're in a caloric surplus, but they will still help you and certainly make a difference. This is also not the fastest way to build muscle, but I don't always think quicker is necessarily better. I don't believe you should have to go through periods of time where you look good and you don't look as good because you're bulking. I think you can look good year round. I think you can always strive to improve day after day, month after month, year after year, and look good, look lean, and just be proud of your body. So hopefully you guys got something from this video, can apply it to your training, your nutrition, and your routine. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.